Hello and welcome back to my channel Willits World. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you this place which is right behind me. This is actually an island called Kokret and it lies in the uh, Chow Prayao River which runs through Bangkok. But I'm in the province just to the northwest of Bangkok called Nontaburi. And today we're going to take a, a ferry across to this island and have a look around. Along the way and also as we're walking around I'm going to be uh, telling you a little bit about the history of the island and how it came to be an island actually. So let's get going. Kokret was originally not an island but instead a meander on the Chao Praya River. During the reign of Ayutthaya King Taisa there was a need to reduce the time it took ships to sail up the river and so in 1722 and with around 10,000 men the king had a canal dug as a shortcut. Over time, the canal gradually became wider due to erosion and became part of the river itself, causing Kokret to become an island that today measures roughly three kilometers in length by one and a half kilometers in width. The island has thrived since the Ayutthaya period, but when the Burmese occupied the city, it was deserted. After Siam gained independence, King Taksin allowed Mon people to settle here. Due to laws at the time banning foreigners from farming, the Mon people used the river clay to make traditional pottery known as Kwan Aman. In fact, even today there are still around 20 workshops as well as many kilns on the island. During World War II, the island was used as a hiding place for many politicians and officers to avoid bombing in Bangkok. Many of them built spare houses to stay in case Bangkok fell into crisis. After the war, these houses were confiscated by the government and the island quickly turned into a tourist destination thanks to its laid-back charm that was so close to the bustling capital city. Just about to board the ferry. They're all waiting for us. <laughs> Okay, so this temple, I'll put the name up on the screen to save me trying to pronounce it, but uh, this was said to be built during the time that uh, Kokret became an island and back in uh, King Rama V's time he uh, instructed that some Italian marble be brought over from the mainland and used to uh, renovate this temple. I think that's around about 1874. But this temple's literally just right by where the ferry drops you off.
So within the uh, temple complex there is a museum, but unfortunately today is Wednesday, so they're not open till one o'clock, and it's half past nine this morning. So most people come at the weekend, so a lot of places are geared up for weekend tourists. But uh, never mind. So this pagoda, as you can see, tilts, leans to one side. And it was built by the Mon people in Burma, who came from Burma, from a place called Bago. And it's modelled on a famous pagoda there called the Srimador Pagoda. And uh, it's meant to have started leaning in 1891. And they tried to uh, rectify the lean in 92, but ended up uh, failing, basically. So they left it uh, tilting and it's just become a symbol for the island. You can see here it's definitely uh, buckling because the uh, of the river, its proximity to the river has caused this over time. So we're just about to go into one of the uh, communities on the island. As I said before, because of the museum's closed and it's Wednesday, there may not be much open. It's going to be a lot quieter than if we come at the weekend. So if you uh, want a choice, if you want nice and quiet but not much open, then come during the week. If you want uh, things to be open and it to be quite busy, then come at the weekend. But this says it's uh, an O-top village. O-top village champion, it says. Not just any old O-top village. And an O-top means one tamp on one product. Uh, and it was uh, an incentive that was set up during Taksin Sinawatra's uh, premiership. He was prime minister. And basically he was trying to get local communities local districts within provinces to sell products that were uniquely from that uh, that district. So as you can see we've got a, a pottery handcraft, handicraft museum which is only a couple hundred meters so we'll take a look at that and another one that's even closer and then we've got a couple of temples So this is what Pai Lom, this is another temple. Okay, so we found uh, a pottery workshop, and in fact, I was just, it was just down a little uh, little alleyway, and I just looked down there, and there was a lady who was just um, coming down, saying, 
Pottery, as they say in Thai, <laughs> and it's open, so uh, you can see the local pottery that they they make here. Pots everywhere here, I have to be careful because they're all on the floor. And here we got the kiln. I think, I don't know for sure if that's still in use. So we're here at another temple, really pretty place this is, this is Wat Sao Tong Tong and it's got these lovely old stupas here which are either bell shaped or you've got other different designs over there. And here you can um, turn these handles on this contraption which is really quite clever and uh, it moves these buckets up this wire and you can I don't know what's in the buckets normally flowers by the looks of it and they go up these cables yeah there's some flowers on there already and you can put them on the on the pagoda same over here. Onto that one over there. So we've come about 740 meters to the tilting pagoda and then Looks like it's saying to go around the whole island is another 5.2 kilometers. We've got another temple. So what I'm going to do is head back. And that's where I'm going to leave off this video for now. If you like it, then uh, give me a big thumbs up and why not subscribe to my channel down below. Until the next video, see you later.